Welcome back to Technique Tuesday. We're gonna talk about the difference in leading a Foxy Basic versus a Foxy Cradle. This video was actually requested to us, so thank you so much. We're gonna put the handle up here. If you have any requests, be sure to put them down because we do try to answer every request that's related to our channel, of course. So thank you, and here you go. So the biggest difference between the Cradle and the Basic and Foxy is the number of steps we take in each of these basics, right? So in the Basic itself, we take four steps. We go one, two, three, four, right? So I can count to four every single time I do that pattern. Where it is in the cradle basic, we take six steps. We go one, two, three, four, five, six. So the question we get often is how do we lead back and forth between these two different basics that I can do a lot of patterns from both ways, right? So if I do one basic first, right? One, two, three, four. Every time I sway, sway, and my left and her right foot is free, I can do any of the patterns that we have in our syllabus for Foxy, right? It always kind of resets back to the beginning again. So now if I want to dance a cradle right from there, I take my first step forward just as I would going into a basic in Foxy, and I just redirect her to the side. So the question is more how do I lead a cradle in general than so specifically from a basic, because that first walk forward here for myself is I do this in many, many, many different patterns, right? And that is after this first step, I have to stop myself and redirect her to the side and change the direction of the sway instead of continuously having her walk backwards, right? So I take one step and I stop myself and move myself to the side and shift and then sway. And at that point, she are, we're already halfway through the pattern. So she knows she's walking forward next and goes sway, sway. I can repeat that again, but the nice part is both patterns, whether I'm doing the basic or the cradle, start with this one walking step. It's up to me now to keep driving through her and do a basic or to redirect myself to the side and start to sway again. So it's about my momentum and my direction as a leader on whether or not I continue traveling or stop myself and shift to the side. And actually, I'm sure Lindsay has an opinion on what feels more or less comfortable here. Yeah, I mean, it's really about a feeling for the follower because we're connected to you in a way that's physical. So, of course, visually, there's not much we can we can know here of which way you want to go. So, it's about energy and weight transfer and when you do it. So, if you're, as a leader, unsure and you haven't really made the decision that you're going to lead a cradle from a basic step and your energy and the second step's already going forward, it's too late and she's already going to take that step backward. So, you have to really have a plan in your mind, not necessarily of like when to do each step, but just lead the basic until you're really ready to lead it properly. And then you're shifting your weight to the side instead of continuing going forward where that's gonna send her weight backwards. So it's really about planning for you as a leader so she can follow you the, the best way possible, basically. For followers, it's all about not anticipating, not assuming. It is difficult for sure because we could take another step backwards. So hopefully everything goes well where he's leading you and the timing that um, is given to you. But I mean, assuming that he has a plan, it usually works out pretty well. But it's about keeping that connection with your partner and waiting for him as a follower and then for the leader being really confident and um, having a plan. Like I know for sure he's taking two forward steps there versus when he's going to the side, he doesn't give me any inclination on the second step to go backwards. So it's about those two things and kind of being able to confidently lead and follow that pattern, which is definitely tricky. One other thing that can actually help is if you are putting these patterns back to back, typically the basic and the foxy doesn't really curve. It's meant to just kind of travel progressively in one straight direction where the cradle is actually a great pattern to use to rotate on the spot. So what you could do to kind of make it easier on yourself is actually rotate the cradle. That Therefore, she's gonna know it's a cradle already and the energy just kind of works. Basic foxy step going straight straight forward, and then he were to curve this step into the cradle, there's a little bit higher of a success rate from there because we know that we can't really rotate the basic. So that's kind of like a easy, not cheat, because it's definitely successful, it's maybe just like an easier way than just keeping it straight. Um, but other than that, that's all I think. Yeah, I think the most difficult points are for the follower that to not assume what's coming next and take one step at a time. The best part about Foxy is how slow it is. So she can take one step and then quite literally try to pause herself without taking a second one. That we practice taking a step and pausing and saying, do we have balance or not? And now I get to go decide and redirect. So us practicing, practicing this together 
trying to get more on the same page because we keep falling into the wrong thing. We, we practice taking one step and then another step. And now I get to go decide which direction we're gonna move in on each one of those steps and she'll get slightly better at balancing on each one of those steps instead of falling into the next thing, whether it be on purpose or not. Uh, one other question that we had, which kind of actually falls under the same category, that kind of goes together is how do we change like the timing in terms of going from the four count to the six count? So that is a little bit interesting, I guess, because you could keep both of them and just count in eights. However, the six count patterns get a little tricky because they go, the phrasing starts to, uh, change the sequence of the patterns a lot of the time. So what you could do instead of just counting in fours or eights, you could go back and forth from counting in fours and then depending on the pattern in sixes and just keep those two things even though it might go off of like the musicality of the actual song. Mm -hmm. um, so it can be confusing. If you're a beginner then it definitely won't bother you but if you are like uh, studied music or danced in the past that might be a little confusing for you. Yeah. But this is, the, this is the easiest way in terms of the sequence, is just to keep it in fours or sixes, in my opinion. Yeah, using numbers in Foxy, you're not counting the beats in the music, you're counting the number of steps you're taking. Yeah. So yes, it's great to say one on the one in the music, but it's much more important that you just know how many steps you're taking in the pattern itself. So if Lindsay and I dance a few of these patterns back to back, in regards to the music itself, I'm counting one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, and then one, two, and just continuing on like that, because even though we counted the four, and then I went back to one again, technically that's the five in the music, not the one. So it's, uh, th without it getting too complicated, you're not counting the music, you're counting the number of steps you're taking yes. in each of these patterns, because phrasing and musicality probably isn't the number one thing on your list for the wedding dance or slow dancing in general. It's about being in control and comfortable together. And just knowing which step you're on when the patterns get a little bit longer if you're working yeah. on more advanced material. And the patterns that we have on our website, which by the way, you can go check that out. Um, but yeah, just counting the sequence of the amount of steps you're taking in each pattern and keeping that separate in your own mind. Of course, when you're dancing to music, hopefully you're not counting out loud anyway. But just when you're learning the steps and putting them together, I get that that can be kind of confusing going back and yeah. forth through those two timings. But thank you so much for joining us on Technique Tuesday. This is Baldwin Feed and we'll see you next week.